nature knowledge. Greetings, this is Mara with the Trustees and the Cooperative Nature School here at the Trustees Moose Hill Farm in Sharon. And I would like to welcome you to another episode of Nature Knowledge. Today, I am on a small hill that overlooks the largest wetland on the farm. And that's because this wetland is chock full of some of my favorite residents on the farm, frogs. If you come to this spot now, around dusk, you will hear a chorus of frogs. And I'm going to play for you a recording I took of this wetland about a week ago. And when you listen, I want you to try to hear three of our resident frogs. I want you to try to listen for the peep peep of our spring peeper. I want you to listen for the banjo-like sounds of our green frogs, which actually I can hear in the background now. And I want you to listen for the trill of our gray tree frog. Now, one frog you didn't hear was our local wood frog. And that's because the wood frogs are most active in early March during their breeding season. So the wood frogs spend the winter in the woodlands here at Moose Hill Farm. And then when the temperature's warm, they make their way to our local vernal pools where they will breed and lay their eggs. So it was months ago when I heard these funny sounds coming from the surrounding vernal pools. Because wood frogs depend on vernal pools, which when the conditions are hotter and drier, they can dry up, they lay their eggs early and their tadpoles develop into frogs very quickly. Now, wood frogs, along with spring peepers and gray tree frogs, have a superpower. Frogs are amphibians, so the temperatures of their bodies depend on the temperatures in their environment. So in these parts in winter, it gets very cold, in fact, freezing. So how do our frogs survive? Well, certain frogs, like our green frogs and our bullfrogs, will go down to the bottom of a pond where the water will not freeze, so they will not freeze. And our American toad is a great digger, so the toad will dig down into the ground below the frost line where it won't freeze. But our local wood frogs, spring peepers, and gray tree frogs, well, they don't go to the bottom of a pond. They can't dig down below the frost line. What they do is they simply go into the woods on a tree or maybe under a log or leaf litter, and there they will turn into frogsicles. That's right. During the winter, the hearts of these frogs will stop beating, they'll stop breathing, and their bodies will freeze. If in the winter you came across one of these frogs, their bodies would look frozen solid and they would appear dead, but they're not. The frogs have abilities, including the ability to produce their own kind of natural antifreeze that protects important parts of their body. So they can survive freezing and when the temperatures warm up, they will thaw and return to normal. That is an awesome superpower. Speaking of superpowers, frogs also have super spit. Frogs are known for being able to quickly whip out their tongues to catch their prey like insects. But researchers have only recently discovered that frogs can actually change the consistency of their spit to better catch their prey. So when it goes for its victim, the frog will change the consistency of its spit 
into a more watery consistency that will cover all the nooks and crannies of the insect. And then once it has that insect, it will change the consistency back to a more sticky consistency that will enable it to keep the insect on its tongue and eat it. As I mentioned before, we started hearing the wood frogs back in early March. And then shortly after that, we started hearing the spring peepers. And it was probably last month that we started hearing the green frogs and the gray tree frogs. Now why? Well, frogs communicate for different reasons. They may want to warn others of some danger they may want to let others know this is their territory. But the main reason we're hearing the frogs at this time of year is because they want to find a mate. And the frogs that we hear calling are males that are advertising themselves as potential partners in the hopes that females will find them attractive. All frogs breed and lay their eggs in water and frogs like the green frog or the bullfrog will spend most of their adult lives in that water. But frogs like our wood frog, our spring peepers, and our gray tree frogs, well, they spend most of their adult lives on land. And the gray tree frog and the spring peeper they are actually tree frogs, so they have special adaptations to help them climb. They have these special pads on their toes that enable them to climb trees in really just about anything, which is also a very cool superpower. Now, because frogs like our wood frogs, our spring peepers, and little gray tree frogs spend most of their adult life on land, they have to make their way from that land down to the wetlands during breeding season. That's how I happen to see a little spring peeper on the trail we take to get to this big wetland. And why, if you're driving your car on Moose Hill Street, around mid-May in the evening, you should drive very slowly and very carefully because hundreds of our little gray tree frogs are trying to cross the street to get to this big wetland. my friends and I see most often here at Ms. Hill Farm is the green frog and I am by a pool of water here on the farm that my nature school friends and I come to often to see green frogs and I did try to catch one. I was not successful so I'm going to show you a video of a green frog that I took here at this uh, body of water just about a week ago and the green frog, even though we call it green frog, its color can actually vary a lot. It can be more brown or more yellowish, and even in some rare cases, it can be blue. And a little fun fact about the green frog is that the um, you can tell the difference between a male and a female based on the size of the tympanum. That is the eardrum that you see behind the eyeball. So if the tympanum is larger than the eye, then it's a male. And if it's smaller, it's a female. So 
friends. As I was here by this body of water talking about frogs with you, I happened to see a frog leaping very quickly my way and right behind the frog was a ribbon snake chasing it. So I was able to catch the wood frog that the snake was pursuing. And so here my friends, Ooh, I don't know, Ooh, I don't know if you can see it. Ooh, there, oh, hello. This is a little wood frog. You can see its whoops. It's loop, loop, little markings on its face. Oop, oop. <laughs> oop, oop. Well, friends, frogs are slippery. Okay, my friends, I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the frogs here on the farm, like the wood frog, the spring peepers, the gray tree frogs, the green frogs. They are certainly some of the farm's noisiest residents, especially in spring, but they have some seriously awesome superpowers that make them fabulous frogs. And I invite you to come to the farm and see for yourself. That's it for this episode of Nature Knowledge. Now that you have the knowledge, I encourage you to go and explore and let me know what you discover.